Sound Design Hangout. How are you doing? Have you been keeping up? Have you been keeping up? Because I have a feeling probably the majority of the people that are listening, watching, probably maybe watch most of these. You know, I don't have a lot of people that watch them, but it seems like I get the same amount of number now. So for all of you who are following along, um, give yourself a pat on the back because this is not easy. Um, Yeah, I try to make it seem like it's easy, and indeed it is, but it's basically like learning a language. And once you understand harmonics, once you understand, um, you know, the various types of sound design synthesis and how they manipulate harmonics, um, it sort of demystifies things, you know? I mean, I think we're used to just opening up, you know, some sort of uh, synthesizer and just like seeing all of these knobs and because, you know, you've never really looked at something like that before, it seems like daunting, you know? And in fact, what I'm looking <laughs> what I'm looking at when I look at this operator is probably completely different than what you're looking at. Um, uh, meaning like, you know, like it, it's, it's every single little thing is familiar. And when it's not, it can just look like some weird, big, blurry monster thing. So keep paying attention. Don't give up. Pat yourself on the back. And today... I wanted to cover just like a lot of random stuff. Um, As I've said, pat yourself on the back for watching all these videos because we're learning so much and we are, um, yeah, and and in the process of all of this, we have actually, or I have actually, maybe you too, have come across a few things that I found interesting that I sort of want to like go over um, and sort of open up. And one of them was uh, when we were using operator with um, FM. So, and I'm just going to, because why not? Especially because uh, it's just pretty good to have a spectrum. And you can click that triangle to get the larger view. I'm gonna click this max off. Max basically says like snapshot the max, but it's not like an even depiction. And sometimes when you got a lot of different notes going on, it can be annoying. So I'm just gonna turn max off. Got it. So, um, one thing, and I'm going to uh, come into this uh, come into this pitch shell over here. Or actually, I don't even have to come into it. I just need to get to this transpose. I'm going to knock it down because I want a nice sub bass sound. Because I think FM sounds really good with uh, bassy FM sounds. So let's turn up level B, and we're going to get FM that FM sound. I always want to try to make sure that this uh, fundamental stays high. Got it. So what I talked about in the operator deep dive, and I wanted to clarify this quickly and then move on to something different, also something in operator um, that I think is going to be really cool. I don't know if we covered, which is bell sounds, but first, um, I was suggesting that you didn't really have a way to modulate like that um, because the LFO didn't do that. Um, If you put it on B, it does the pitch. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, I'm like, I don't want it on pitch. I want a way to just do this. So I said, you know, the only way I'm I'm aware to do that, and this is what I was kind of... uh, being harsh on uh, operators, I was like, you know, I would have to come in and do this. And I was like, oh, there really isn't another way to, uh, there isn't really like another way to do that. Um, And that's not true. Um, In fact, if you come in here to LFO, you see destination B. If I went to oscillator B volume, um, I would get that sound. (laughs) 
The only problem, though, is this destination B. You can only put it on one of these, so it doesn't really solve that, right? So um, if I, because you're going to want to probably have C in here, because like I want extra, I want some higher harmonics to this sound right now. So there's no way to modulate this C without going into here, LFOing it. Yeah, some very crazy sounds are possible with um, FM. And that's what we're going to do. So I just wanted to cover that. Um, you know, yeah, you can modulate this B without having to use this LFO, but it's not going to move. Um, and yeah, you have to dedicate this lonely little B destination. Um, the fact that these modulate the pitch, which is weird because like right now it's in an FM algorithm. So like there is no pitch of B. Um, I mean, I guess they're like, if it's just modulating um, the fine amount, I guess that would kind of be it. But yeah, it doesn't do the right job. Um, so like these almost never get used and it's almost like a waste. <laughs> um, the filter, that's convenient, but I'd rather just um, modulate the filter with one of these because I can see it move. So anyways, moving on. Um, and we are actually going to go back into um, operator for bell sounds. It's another kind of a sound that you get with operator. Um, and <laughs> before we get there, I um, um, wanted to show you how you get FM oscillator detune. So check this out. Now we got our sine wave. Now, if we click the fine up a little bit, listen. Look at them move. Whereas before, it was kind of static, right? Not bad. I mean, FM bass has a good sound. But if we put this up to two, now listen. We can also take this C oscillator, bring it, bring it down, give it more of like a punch. So like it sounds a lot punchier and I almost feel like I slapped a compressor on it and like punched it up with some compression, but I didn't. I just did it with manipulating the sound in these envelopes. So that's why it's like, that's why it's like so powerful. And now listen to this. I mean, I could still um, come here and like add some compression and further beef it up. So you just have like extra, extra abilities to really make your stuff like real punchy. Without, with, sounds really good. I'm gonna lower that a little bit. That's intense. Wonderful. So, operator can make these bell sounds. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to get into audio effects. I want to make sure it stays in pitch, though. So, um, so this is a C. Um, I'm going to, so what you do is you basically crank up the fine tuning and you get like in harmonics or you get harmonics that are like not related um, to the sound and so let's play with this I'm gonna take the uh, octave up so hear that it's like very but I want to I'm gonna come back in here I want to click this max back because I want to see what we're playing at here and I want to try to get us a nice bell sound. I'm gonna get rid of C for now. So it sounds very like crazy, and that's perfectly fine. Um, if we take B and take its envelope down, let's see what we get. Now that's a very unusual sound. Now this is just coming out of operator. We're just working with sine waves here, you know? So um, how interesting is that? So that's like a G. Um, 
so yeah, um, bell sounds. <laughs> Listen to that extra punch we gave it from C. Yeah, bell sounds. Amazing, right? You can put this spread on and listen to this now. Filter, filter drive in case you needed extra amazing and extra punchy. You could put a filter envelope on it, but you really don't need it because we've 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 got all of our harmonics being manipulated by these envelopes. Um, but one other thing I thought that would be interesting. Oh yeah, um, where was I gonna go? Uh, Forgot. Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, cool. Um, actually, I want to see what it sounds like an octave below. That just sounds great. So yeah, that's like all operator. Um, so yeah, that's a cool bell sound. Actually, let's uh, let's put it up two octaves. Like, listen to that. It's like too bright. Let's see if it sounds good if we open these envelopes up. sounds like you're hitting a pipe. It almost kind of reminds me of something we would craft up in like collision or something. Wow, now it sounds like it's more of like a steel drum or something. have kind of like an inharmonic feel like not really tonal because that's kind of why um so that's like interesting um yeah kind of crazy so i think you get the idea um that can be something fun to play with so there we go um wanted to kind of get into that real quickly and I'm going to open up another MIDI track. And we we looked at clip automation. And there was something I wanted to uh, show you. Um, one thing that we covered in the last SDHO is, you know, if you're going to be starting in, like, drawing in MIDI clips, or even if you have your own MIDI notes drawn in, um, it always helps, especially if you know what scale you want to play in. And that's probably going to be most of the time to click this scale button. Um, you know, you can choose whatever, you know, starting note, whatever, like the tonic will be. You can be like, oh, we can try all of these fun ones. And yeah, you can just start drawing them in. It's that, it's that easy. And so you didn't have this, um, you didn't have this previously. And it just makes it so much easier. Because I used to, um, you know, draw these in back in the day until I realized I just didn't want anything more to do with it. Like, it was just too much. Every time I see two of these together, I like to kind of throw one in just to see what that's what that's like. So uh, let's pl let's push play. We won't hear anything because we just have a MIDI clip here. So let's get wavetable, see what this sounds like. I had no idea it was going to sound good.
All right, so there's a little pattern. Um, and let's get some drums. What I want to do is insert a MIDI track here, and I want to uh, basically show you one of the quickest ways to get some drums up and running. So I don't really care about drums. I just want to have something playing while this wavetable thing plays. So honestly, the easiest way like to really quickly get good drums um, like just straight out the gate so you can just get a quick pattern to build something around is to throw a drum rack on one of these MIDI clips. And um, uh, where is it? Drum synth. So I'm going to get drum synth kick, put it down here, and then I'm going to get the drum synth snare. And uh, where's the hat? Hi-hat. And get this a quick little thing going. So I'm going to put the kick on the one, snare on the two, snare on the four, because that's the backbeats. They're always going to be there. And let's just do the kick on the three, do very basic. And now let's um, play both of these. Let's get that four on the floor. So I want to come into modulation and I want to do some interesting modulation. So we had the pen tool and we were like drawing in different stuff, right? And we made sure we were on 16ths because we're playing in 16ths. Okay, this 16th's going to have a different value than this one. Okay, fun, fun, fun. Got it. Okay, turn B to get off a pen tool. If you want to clear the envelope, you just click clear envelope. So I want to find something to modulate my pattern here. And... First, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to see if uh, moving this wavetable gives it like a much different sound. It says white noise, so in theory, it should be very similar. Um, and I'm going to, just so I can switch back easier, I'm going to turn this spectrum off the full mode. So let's uh, play this and see if uh, what might be a good parameter to uh, do some clip modulation. See if it sounds different when I move this thing. Really doesn't. Um, let's see warp. Let's get a different one. I don't like white noise. Sure, let's just do that. So I'm going to highlight this, get this shape, <laughs> and you can see. Let's do something different. They'll have different sounds. It's 
do frequency. Take it off pen tool and uh, let's do one of those shapes. Don't know why that one went so low. I don't know why it's doing that so low like that. So I wanted to show you those like crazy shapes, you know, you can just go in and, uh, and just, yeah, like that's going to have a sound. I'm actually going to, I want to, I'm going to clear all envelopes because I don't think it should be. So it's at 60, let's see this. Yeah. So it's all about where this thing starts. So if it started low, you know, that's where this bar is going to start. So we could do something like this or hold on. Let's do uh, a this. Let's see what this sounds like. I think a good way to uh, look at it when you're trying to figure out what to modulate, if you want to think of it like hitting the top is like the, it like, you know, like frequency on blast. And then when it's lower, it can kind of help it make sense for you. So like when you, uh, another way is like th this one we're playing with right now, these primes or whatever, um, kind of sounds similar, but if you find one where it's like different, like down here, so like down here, it's like very, I can just tell it's going to be like uh, more sine wavy down here and more chaotic up here. Right. And then if you move this up, so you could have it be, so you could like come into the clip here. Um, yeah, let's just delete all the, clear all the envelopes. And so a way you could think of it is like, okay, down here, this oscillator one position, um, make sure we're here, oscillator one position. Um, so it could be like, okay, we start low and then we rank up high and then we, um, you know, come back down low before going up again, go back low, start here, and then I'm gonna highlight this part, do with this shape, and then I'm gonna come down to here and like draw it up here and then have this one go up and then uh, take it up and do, and uh, you know what I mean? Like I'm totally, I have no idea, oh, this might sound cool because this means like the, um, the oscillator in position will start up and then go down. That could probably be cool. Since this is selected, let's do Command D, like <laughs> duplicate it. Um, let's go down here, start this one like this. Uh, maybe let's have it step it up like that. And like, this is just crazy. It's just chaos. Oh, I think chaos, like, chaos lady return. What do you think of this? I give it two thumbs up because I love the chaos. Chaos Lady is back. Smash a like if you like Chaos Lady. How, how much do you want to bet? <laughs> this crazy envelope sounds good. Um, I bet you it does. Let's click play. What? Let's get some delay on here.
Yeah, if you've never played with beat repeat, do it. Beat repeat would even sound good on this wavetable track. Dive in, take a look at that. So, um, I'm going to just keep this stuff up. And I want to do something that's very simple, yet I think might be very, very powerful. Let's go into Operator, Record Enable. All we care about is this sine wave. And I want to just do volume modulation on a sine wave. So, just because I'd rather use the LFO here, I'm also going to get spectrum again, even though we don't have a whole lot to look at. <laughs> Click off the max. So predictably, we have a sine wave. Now, when you see it here, we're playing negative 12 dB. I want it to go up and down like this, which means volume modulation. It'll go from like negative 12 down to negative 24. So let's click map and let's click this level over here. Okay, that's too much. Let's take the depth down. Now, I want to see if I can get a really cool, like, crystal singing bowl type sound. Let's see what we got. So I want this visual feedback here. Now I'm just using my ears really. I just like to know that I can see it. See it here, see it up there. What sounds What sounds extra meditative to you? Let's take it down an octave. I need it higher. Let's come in A. We have to, uh, we can't change A with LFO modulating it, so we're going to have to delete it. Take it, transpose it down. Just what sounds good. Yikes. I'm gonna take this down just to cut off any like crazily high highs. Give it more release. Maybe even give it some attack because it's just too big on, too quick. Take some of these frequencies down. Cool. 
um, yeah, the uh, crystal bowl sound didn't really um, come to fruition the way I thought it was going to. Um, and then I think maybe the last thing I'll do, because I'm kind of curious to know what this sounds like, I'm going to drop an operator again, and I'm going to go to an oscillator A, make it white noise. And... I'm going to go to envelope, give it a little bit of an attack, release, and I'm going to, I'm going to double click in here, I'm going to turn off scale mode, all of these notes are the same, because that's just how, uh... so I'm going to click in here, um, I'm going to take the velocity up, not that it really matters, and I'm going to, let's see, what do I want to do here? Um, I'm going to take this length up to something crazy. I'm going to click legato. I'm going to click play. So now we have this wonderfulness. Take up the volume. This is low pass filter, so it's cutting out everything above 384 hertz here. Now this is pretty meditative. Audio effects, LFO, map, filter frequency, but take this depth down a lot, take this rate down a lot, just because I know we're going to need to do that anyway. That sounds like you're out at, like, choppy seas. No, I don't want that. That's too chaos. I'm coming back for the fourth time. Chaos Lady shall... exist forever. dial it into taste. Okay, I'm cool with it stopping at like 450. I don't want it to get much higher than like 700. So that means I need to take the depth down. Stop it and just start it from the beginning. It's okay. Yeah, I don't really want it to go much higher, but I want to see, you know. I'll knock the offset down a little bit. I feel like the audio is kind of crackling a little bit. Hopefully that's... It's weird because my CPU isn't even hitting out, so I'm just wondering what that is, but hopefully you didn't hear it. So here's what I want to do. Um, I actually want to get a auto filter. some weird effects on this like vinyl distortion <laughs> let's give it some volume it's too much in fact I'm gonna put this after the uh, before the auto filter so the auto filter takes some of this out
When's the last time you played with vinyl distortion, am I right? Again, I have it before the auto filter because it's gonna put a lot of high frequencies up here that I don't really know if I want. Let's throw a hybrid reverb. Ooh. Wow, I like the sound of this. You always want to play with decay, especially if you want like a big sound. Go to parallel. So now we're hearing it come through this, going out, hearing it come through this, going out rather than going into this, and then flowing into this. Notice, listen to the sound and then I'm gonna turn off vinyl distortion. And then I'm going to turn it back on. Ready? Let's come into here, change the algorithm. sine wave. Take the course down. It's probably going to move too slow to be interesting at all. In fact, I'll go to LFO. Yeah, <laughs> oscillator B. This is just a triangle wave, but because it's being like filtered, it sounds good. Filter, get some filter drive, add extra harmonics. It's kind of nice. go into the hybrid reverb and do cut out some lows. This might tighten up our sound. That's making me feel relaxed now. Let's see what grain delay does. Will it give us some chaos? it normally really only gives crazy sounds when you put something different down here for pitch. So if I put 12, that'll be up an octave. Is that too much chaos for you guys? Let's go to 7. That's up a uh, perfect fifth. You really gotta tweak this thing. Yeah, you almost like have to have a different pitch here.
because it's more of like an ambient, like, excuse me, it's more of like an atmospheric sound. Grain delay, I think, works better when you have more like pitched tonal stuff. So I hope this was interesting, guys. I had a lot of fun um, just like playing around, being silly, um, getting into a, some different stuff. Um, yeah. I need a break from vinyl distortion. It's hurting my ears. Anyways, guys, pat yourself on the back because you're doing good. And uh, I'll see you again.